Hello everyone, this is Caleb Johnson. Uh, I've been playing independent professional ball for five years and I'm just had this on my mind and just wanted to let everybody know the why and why not to play independent baseball. Uh, also just want to give a shout out and a thank you to 503 Baseball Academy in Portland, Oregon and 643 Hidden Academy, which I'm at right now in Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, beautiful facility here. Uh, just want to give a shout out to those two facilities for letting me uh, have a place to get my work in, either on the West Coast or down here and down South. So really want to thank y'all guys. Garrett Richens, uh, owner of 503 Baseball Academy in Portland, Oregon, which is in Clackamas actually, Clackamas County. and. Uh, Brad Emus, the owner of 643 Hidden Academy here in Monroe, Louisiana. So, really want to thank y'all for that. Really do appreciate it. And if anybody needs a place to go hit, get your work in, any other minor league guys, indie guys, hit me up and I can get you in touch with those guys. So, just DM me and I can get you in touch with those guys if you're in the area. But, to what I was on talking about, uh, the why. Why play independent professional ball? Personally, I say why not? If you are ready to have, ready to sacrifice, are able to have enough money, that's one of the big things in indie ball is money. Um, being somewhat financially stable and just financially stable uh, throughout the season and if you do not care about if you have a vehicle putting a lot of miles on your vehicle going from coast to coast going from one end of the country to the other flying to all these different places then I would say that any ball is for you if you do not get drafted um, I also want to talk about uh, guys that are transitioning from minor league ball, affiliated ball, to independent um, ball in the state. If you are not, if you are going to, let me rephrase, if you're going to Frontier League, American Association, Atlantic League, and now the Pioneer League, and mainly the Frontier American Association in Atlantic and you do not produce the first game possibly the first week um, they will release you they'll, they'll for the people who are um, watching who are minor league players coming from affiliated ball now it all depends on just from this is all my opinion now down the law. I mean, this is all in my opinion and things I've seen. All depends on are you in low A? Are you coming from low A? Are you coming from high A? Are you coming from double A? Are you coming from triple A? Major League Ball, we know. They can do whatever they want. Um, again, this is my opinion from what I've seen. Um, I'm talking about established major leaguers, not just, just made it and then you made it back down to double A. But even those guys, they're making a great career in the Atlantic League, American Association, some in the Frontier League. Um, but the guys who are undrafted, all the free agents that are undrafted, it's hard. It's really hard to get into those leagues. Um, well, it's been for me, but I'll talk about that later. But. Uh, may not be hard for some of y'all. I'm just getting, I'm just putting it out there that it might be very stressful on you because some guys may get picked up that you think you're better than. That happens a lot. There's a lot of politics and a lot of things that go on behind closed doors that you don't know about. Uh, you gotta learn how to play the game in that sense. If your bat, glove, or your arm doesn't speak for itself, that's when you have to start knowing more about the politics game in this game of baseball. 
with that. There are, if you are, wanting to play independent baseball. I do recommend Black Sox Pro Baseball, um, ran by Joe Torrey out of New Jersey, not the Joe Torrey, the other Joe Torrey. <laughs> uh, shout out to you, Joe, and thank you for everything that you've done with, uh, to help me out with everything. So I really do thank you. Um, he has his organization, and from November through April, they're down in Florida, South Florida, West Palm Beach and below. So, you can hit them up on Instagram, it's Black Sox Pro Baseball, uh, just at Black Sox Pro Baseball on Instagram, and he'll point you in the right direction. But again, I'm going to say this again. Are you financially stable? Are you are you ready to make sacrifices? If you have a significant other, are you ready to tell her or him that I'm going to go play professional baseball? I'm going to go work with this guy out of Jersey that's been doing this stuff for over 11 years. Over 11 years. My, my, my bad, Joe. I'm trying to remember how, how long you have been doing it, but I'm going to say over 11 years and I want to work with him on the East Coast side the reason why I say that goes I'll get into some other stuff on the East Coast side work in South Florida and be down there get myself a job waiting tables doing whichever and just grinding because some of the place because some of the places you'll probably be staying at because there's housing with all this with Black Sox Pro Baseball there's housing with all this you might be housing with seven other guys, depending on where you're at, and depending on who you're talking to, and that's still a cost. There's a cost in that. There's a cost where you're gonna have to pay the organization because the organization is bringing down certain managers who have clout and these leagues, I said, the American, the American Association, the Frontier League, the Pioneer League, the Atlantic Leagues, they have clout in the USPBL, United Shores uh, Professional Baseball League in Michigan. They have clout. Joe know these guys. So, are you willing to sacrifice for that? Are you willing to sacrifice financially? Are you really willing to sacrifice that good paying job that you have at home? Are you willing to sacrifice being with your significant other each and every day? Are you willing to sacrifice the time that you spend with them? Are you willing to sacrifice the family time that you have? What all are you willing to sacrifice for that, for this game? Now, a lot of people now, that's just with, um, I'll, I'll get back to that. I'm kind of going everywhere with this. But um, that's what you're going to have to do playing for, trying to, trying to play independent professional baseball. And an organization that can help you out with that is Black Sox Pro Baseball. Now, there's another organization on the West Coast, Zone 22, ran by Joey Molina. Really good guy. Um, just so happens that two of the guys that really helped me out, both names are Joe. <laughs> Joey Molina and Joe Torrey. Just so happens. But anyway, uh, Joey Molina. Um, he owns on Zone 22 down in LA. So any of the guys that are on the West and West Coast, you need to hit them up. And I'm mainly saying all this because I am thinking of logistics for guys. If you're on the West Coast, Joey Molina. If you're on the East Coast, look at Joe Torrey. If you're from, if you're from Chicago, east of the Mississippi, even in Texas, Texas going straight up and over towards the East Co Eastern Seaboard. Go to Joe Torrey. That's my thing. West Texas and all the other places. Go to Joey Molina. Go there. Zone 22 with him. He has the LA games that are going on right now. He'll be bringing out 
guys that are scouts for the Dodgers, scouts for the Phillies. This is when I was down there when I did this. Uh, and also GMs from the LMB, the Mexican Majors, which is considered AAA baseball. It is in MILB. So letting you know that. Now, guys that aren't Mexican, because this is the Mexican Majors, if you do not have any type of Mexican in you, you'll be, you'll be known as a pocho if you don't already know what that is. That's basically where you'll be, you have to have double A to triple A to major league experience or talent to get considered because you're not Mexican. Now, if you are Mexican, or have some Mexican in you, that's a great way that you can do some things. Joey Molina will help you out with that, man. He will help you out with that. But you have to be a dude. You have to be a dude. The payments with him, I don't know, but if you need to get in contact with Joey Molina, uh, on Instagram, his uh, handle is Joey underscore LA underscore LA. Great guy. Real good baseball guy. But if you, you need to know your talent level, man. You need to know your talent level and your mental level. And this is with both BlackSoxProBaseball.com. I said, I said the handle for you. So BlackSoxProBaseball.com. Hit him up. You want to get all the info go to that website or zone 22 if you want to get with joe torrey or joey molina plain simple yeah i gotta be some dudes man yeah i gotta be able to sacrifice for shit if you're not able to sacrifice for shit um, why are they gonna go to bat for you man they're not gonna be able to do shit for you why are they gonna put their name on you don't sacrifice those things. It doesn't even matter about the talent. Are you willing to sacrifice that shit? And it's all on your decision. It's not that they're forcing you to do anything. But both Joey Molina and Joe Torrey, I would say that those are two of the best advisors I've had with professional baseball. Mainly because Joe Torrey, he introduced me to B.J. Phillips, who is now the manager of the Lexington Legends. I work with B.J. with my hitting. Because of that, I became the hitter that I knew I was just because I worked with him. On the workouts I did with him. Joy Molina, when I went with... Um, Baseball Scouting League. BaseballScoutingLeague.com. Joey Molina works on closely with them. Uh, so shout out to them. Thank y'all for everything that y'all have helped me out with too. They, um, by going out there when I was down in the West Coast, when I flew out there, it was really good ball. And I networked with a lot of good managers there. Sometimes you don't even need to be the best player there, but you can show that you have the talent. And I'm talking about if you do the things with baseball scouting league or with the black with Black Sox Pro Baseball. The networks that you can create through that, just by meeting all these managers, even just through the players. They'll help you get signed to places. And that's one of the reasons why I keep on doing it because how good I know I am. Had two good seasons. This last season wasn't so good. Injuries and stuff happen. But that's just something that people should understand. It's something that you should look at. 
Always look into stuff like that. That's why I say finances are a big thing. Finances are a really big thing. If you don't have your finances together, I would say before you leave out for ball, you should have at least, if you're on the lowest league I know of, I would think Pecos and Empire. You should have at least $10,000 saved up. So, if you need to get that, do whatever you can by any means to get that, you need to start yesterday to do that. Because I thought $5,000 was enough. No, I came back home broke. So, and that's what... That's even with leagues that pay you. You should have money saved up just in case for emergencies. Because you could be playing, guys paying you, and all of a sudden you're cut. And then you're spending all this time while you're cut. And you're not with the team going here, there, here, and there. And you, you don't know how you're going to pay for shit. Because you got cut and the team's not paying you no more. You're unemployed. So what are you going to do? Huh? That's why I go back again to sacrifices for this. There's a lot of sacrifices you got to do for this shit, man. It's a, it's a grind, dog. I know that you've seen a lot of things in minor league ball uh, where they say that minor leaguers should get paid more. True. I agree with that. That some of these uh, organizations should house their players. I agree with that. But in the lower levels of indie ball, shit's a grind, dog. It's some grimy shit that happens in there, man. And uh, guys that are getting into this, y'all need to understand that. Also, some of the guys that um, think they know what pro baseball is, and these are rookies, or guys that have only played, not even just Empire League, Pecos League, uh, Mavericks League. I played in the Mavericks this past season. Um, what was that one league? It's out in Indiana, I forgot what it was. Um, somebody's going to comment about what that league is in Indiana or whatever. Um, and even some of the COVID leagues that happened in uh, 2020. Uh, Y'all think that's what pro baseball is. It's really not. Uh, from stories I've heard, minor league ball, from friends of mine, I'm, I'm not going to name drop from friends of mine. There's some grimy shit that happens in um, minor league ball. So there's probably even more grimy shit that you're just like, damn, that's fucked up that happens in indie ball. Now I'm talking about any league, professional league that is outside of affiliated baseball. So people will do what they need to do so that they get their shot. People will say what they need to say so that they will get their shot. People do not give a fuck about you, bro. I'm telling you that now. But that's just the other stuff because guys who have played the Division One baseball probably realize that stuff too. Even guys in D3, NAI, uh, JUCO, and uh, D2. Y'all probably understood that. But that's just something that I'm relaying to y'all just because, I, I mean, I've been in this shit for a minute, you know? Shit, I'm almost 30, so. I've been in this shit for a while. But, um, something else, something else that, um, I wanted to let y'all know, too, is that, uh, with baseball, or any ball, what did I talk about? I talked about sacrifices. Talked about 
about everything else with that. Right, okay. Y'all gonna do all this? And y'all need help with advice. Hit my line, man. DM me. All you have to do is DM me. Black Star, Black Star Baller. At Black Star Baller. Just hit me up. I'm out there. Now, I'm gonna talk about the why not to play independent baseball. I basically said that. If you do not want to sacrifice any of that shit that I said before, don't do it. If you're not ready to possibly have an apartment with no furniture and be eight guys to that apartment, don't fucking do it. If y'all aren't ready to not be paid on time or not be paid at all, don't fucking do it. If y'all don't want to leave your girlfriend and or boyf or and or boyfriend 2021, I say that. Don't fucking do it. If y'all aren't ready to leave your families, don't fucking do it. If y'all don't understand or have social cues correctly for the clubhouse and are able to pick up on social cues in the clubhouse when there are veterans there, five, ten-year veterans, possibly ex-MLB guys, and you think that you hot shit because you finally made it, made it, an indie ball now. Where sometimes you have to fall in line by looking at these social groups. You don't want to do that. Don't fucking do it. If you're a racist fuck, and you're not ready to have your face smashed in because you say some stupid shit and nobody protects you because of that stupid shit you did. Don't fucking do it, okay? There's a lot of things that happen in baseball that people don't talk about. I say that last one because there are things that happen and things that people say that now, it's not, getting, it's not being let to slide, so be careful with what you say. But that's all I'm going to say on that. But that's all I have for the whys or why nots. Um, if anybody has any questions or anything, comment down below. Um, and if you want to talk to me on more of a personal note, just DM me. And uh, again, um, some of the leagues, but I do want to say some of the leagues that people can go into if they are trying to get into indie ball, um, they're all good leagues. Been in all of them. Well, the lower levels anyway. Been in all of them. The higher ones like Frontier, uh, American Association, Atlantic, and now Pioneer. Uh, haven't been in them, but I've heard really good things about them. I have nothing bad to say about those leagues. I have nothing bad to say about any of those teams. Because we're all just trying to play. We're all trying to play and get to the major leagues. Get into affiliate ball, get to the major leagues, and get paid, baby. That's all we're trying to do. But um, shout out to um, the Gonzalez brothers, Eddie and Jerry. Thank y'all so much for when I first got released. Um, y'all open your doors to me. <laughs> and uh, it's really because of y'all that I got in contact with all these other people because I knew I had to get better. So I really do thank the Empire League um, for doing what they did because it helped me grow. And I really do appreciate that, especially you, uh, Jerry, because I was mainly talking with uh, you 
when all of this was going on, because I know Eddie, he's, he runs the league, so, I mean, he's a president, he's a, he's, he's a president, so I know that he's doing everything that he needs to do to make sure all that, and Jerry, you're doing all the other stuff, so I really do appreciate y'all for that, and uh, thank you for that. Um, I thank the Pecos League, uh, that was my first league that I played in, um, Trinidad Triggers, I opened my eyes to what professional ball is. Uh, great team that was on over in Trinidad. And I thank y'all for that. I thank y'all for that. So thank you for that. Um, of course, <laughs> I thank Joe Torrey and Joey Molina. Uh, Joe Torrey because he helped me get better by introducing me to all of these different managers. Um, and people who can help work me out so that I can become a better player myself, especially a better hitter. Um, thank you, Joe Torrey, for introducing me to DJ Phillips so that I really could become really the hitter that I am today. <laughs> so thank y'all for that. Uh, Joy Molina, thank you for helping me know that grit in baseball. You're my manager in Aguada and show me how it is to really be a baseball guy, man. And I, I really do appreciate you for that. Thank you, Black Sox Pro Baseball. Thank you, Zone 22, for all of that. Uh, and also thank you to uh, the Mavericks League as well. Uh, this past season that I played in, I had nowhere to go. And Tony Toccato, uh, my manager, hit me up, told me to come through. Played well, even though I was hurt for a month, oblique injury. but. This is something that happens, and uh, I really want to thank y'all for that as well. Because it was fun this season, and uh, I really do thank everybody that has uh, contributed to my career so far. This is not a retirement video, by the way. I'm just grateful. It's been on my mind. I just got to say it. And plus, I got to say this knowledge to everybody because friends, I have people that are out there trying to get it. Some guys are succeeding, some guys are failing. And I just want to know, um, everybody know, it's okay. <laughs> it's baseball, baby. It's okay. So, um, I really do um, appreciate everybody that's helped me out. Um, I really do appreciate my instructors, uh, Garrett Richens and Brad Enos for helping me Get my swing correct so that PJ can tweak it to where it is now. So, yeah. <laughs> again, thank y'all for everything that y'all done. Uh, again, if anybody has any questions about those instructors or anything like that, just on um, DM me about it, and then we can talk more on that. If anybody needs help with a hidden or anything like that, but uh, comment what you think about the video. It's one of, one of the few that I'll probably be putting out throughout the off season. I'll let your boy.